Well, my next guest is usually standing on this side of the camera doing his usual wonderful job in interviewing participants all behind the binoculars doing an outstanding job calling all the action. Now he's standing with me as a very proud and excited owner of the RC Simpson Sprint winner, Sergeant Lou, and I refer to Rob Orba. Well, Rob, good to catch up there. More importantly, good to catch up with you as a very proud and excited owner of the RC Simpson Sprint. Sergeant Lou, he went like a jet. Yeah, thanks, Mick. Uh, we're, we're pretty excited, as you can imagine. Uh, it's a, a lifelong uh, commitment uh, to the sport. Uh, I've been very fortunate to obviously have some, some nice horses in the past uh, with Bella's Delight, who's the mum of Sergeant Lou. And, you know, this horse, uh, you know, I've sort of said to a few people, uh, I think he's uh, the most exciting horse we've ever bred or raced, uh, you know, in the 35 years we've been involved in. And to come here tonight and, and to win, you know, such a prestigious race, uh, we, we're pretty happy. Bella Salai, she did a marvellous job for a triple group one winner. Yeah, she won three group ones. Uh, she, she was very special, won a Breeders' Crown and a couple of Vic Bread finals. Uh, went around in the Queen of Pacific place there, went to the WA Pacing uh, Mayor's Championship over in, in, at Gloucester Park, finishing second. And, you know, she was always just a, a wonderful mare and she's been a great mum as well. And, you know, to, to, to be able to produce a horse of this calibre, uh, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it's a credit to her. Rob, an outstanding training performance by Kari and Paul Miles, but also an outstanding front-running drive by Michael Bellman. In an interview I did with him earlier in the night, he said he would lead. He said this horse is special. They won't be getting past him. Yeah, look, it's, uh, you know, th th these people aren't ha household names. Uh, you know, Kari and Paul Miles uh, have been lifelong friends for, for mine, and uh, I'm very, uh, very indebted to them for the work they do uh, with my horses. Um, they're, they're just... Beautiful people, uh, great, great horse, horse people, and um, you know they've they've looked after my horses, uh, you know, over 35 years, and we've had a great ride. I mean, I think as, as trainers themselves, they've they've trained 12 Group One winners, and you don't find too many, you know, that small, small, fast, small stable that can produce multiple Group One winners, and, and they've been able to do that. And uh, we, we're hoping that this bloke can can go on um, and, and hopefully you know emulate at least a Group One somewhere down the track. Uh, you know, for Mick Bellman, um, pretty special. You know, he's he's based at Ararat, probably doesn't get you know the opportunities that he deserves. Uh, and you know, I sort of said to him uh, a little while ago, I, he hasn't driven a Group One winner, and I said to him, I think I've got a horse here that just might be able to do it for you one day. And um, at the moment, we're ticking the boxes, and you know, whether it's his preparation or, or somewhere down the track, or, we we believe he's 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 capable of winning a Group One somewhere. Rob, out in 27, those middle sectionals were just perfect for you. 30.1, 28.6, then he allowed him to zip home in 25.8. Yeah, and look, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, probably being in front's not even his go. He, he's such a relaxed animal. Uh, he, he just has a real good gawk around, uh, and he's even much better when he's following speed. Uh, you know, Mick said to me, you know, when he came back, he was just halfway up the straight. He said he was going to sleep. He said, I'll pull the earplugs just to wake him up. He's a great stayer. His mum was a, a wonderful stayer, just probably lacked that real brilliant quarter and you only had to see this horse, I think that 25, eight or so, his last last 400. I think that's the Sweet Lou coming out of him. Uh, you know, Sweet Lou, just an amazing sire and has really left a lot of high speed horses and Bella's Delight's probably where the staying capability comes in. So he, he's a full package, you know, like he's just got great temperament, he's a colt. Uh, and you wouldn't know it. He's travelled up with La Belle Bijou, which is his sister. He, tr he sits in the paddocks next to the mares. Uh, he, he just takes no notice of them. And, you know, he sat here all night, first time away from home. He just travelled up superbly. I sort of stood in the stores with him for a couple of hours, just patting him, and he went to sleep. At one point, I thought I might have put him too much to sleep, but uh, uh, he, once he gets out there, he, he's pretty professional. Well, as you said, 35 years in the industry, 35 years of wonderful excitement as an owner-breeder, also in the media, as a race caller and also a presenter, you do it with a lot of passion, but there was no family background in racing. No, uh, look, I came from an, an Italian heritage family, uh, neither my mum or dad, uh, who passed away, uh, had no involvement in the sport. Uh, look, you know, we uh, we sort of, you know, pr pretty you know, struggling family uh, growing up. And uh, back in Melbourne, uh, there used to be a, a television show, Channel 7 Penthouse Club, with uh, Mike Williamson and Mary, Mary Hardy. Uh, and uh, they used to watch this cabaret show. And I was only about four or five years of age. And the trots used to come on from the showgrounds. And 
I, I can't explain why. I just uh, loved the horses and, um, you know, I, I just, yeah, loved it. And, and my dad sort of took me out to the showgrounds when, you know, he had no idea about horses and he just took me out there with the excitement of, of the racing and I just loved it. And we moved homes when I was 13. We moved out uh, to, to a, a suburb out in, in Melbourne in Bulleen and I was just, the way it worked out, I had two neighbours that were involved in harness racing and uh, they used to just take me to the trots every week. And I just loved it, um, loved the animal. And uh, they raced horses, so I used to go up to the stables. And you know, uh, Ian Dornoff, who uh, who's now you know not so much involved in the game now, he's he's up in Queensland. But you know, he sort of took uh, you know both Paul and myself you know under his wing there for, for quite a number of years and got us involved and, and involved with the horses. And uh, you know, we both had a great love for the animal. And I suppose. You know, I had a professional career. I ended up working at the ATO. I mean, probably, you know, it's probably the worst place that you'd want to tell anyone that you worked at. But look, I worked there for 35 years and, and sort of pursued that professional, you know, career and uh, just kept dabbling, uh, you know, in the media work. And look, the media work for mine was just, I loved the horses and I loved harness racing. And hence why uh, I thought, oh, how what else can I get involved in? I can't work the horses so much anymore. And so, you know, just doing, you know, the interviews and a bit of race calling, I'm probably doing a bit more race calling now than what I used to uh, a long time ago because it really wasn't my full-time full, 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 full -time profession. But I sort of finished up, uh, you know, probably about nearly four years ago when, you know, Dan Malecki's a good mate of mine, you know, and he said, oh, you can fill in a bit more. And so I started doing a bit more calling in, in recent years. And I love it. Look, you know, I, I, I won't hide the fact. I, I just love it. Uh, I love the game and, and love the horse as well. So, you know, just just love the game. It comes across in your calls, Rob, and also in your interviews. You have such a passion for the industry, the, the people involved and the horses. But as a race caller... At 23, you were virtually a late bloomer. Yeah, I was. Look, and as I said, it, a lot of race callers, you know, they, they have a, a passion. And look, I had a passion when I was young to do it as well, but I had no family support on to guide me. So, you know, it, it really took to about 21, 22 when, you know, I had a, you know, met Dan Malecki, you know, and, and Dan was just such a young, talented, high, highly talented person. And, you know, we became really good friends. Paul Langham and Ronnie Hawks, well, Arthur Cooper, who's over in uh, in Europe these days calling. And, you know, we started doing, uh, getting involved, just practicing at Mooney Valley and then, sort of went out to uh, calling a lot of the non-TAB meetings. So there used to be a lot of picnic meetings. So that was my little part-time job on a, on a Saturday or a Sunday and mainly doing a little bit of extra money so I could pay for my horses because, you know, I just love the horses. And, um, yeah, and, and that's where it all stemmed from. And, and today, as I said, just really lucky to get some opportunities to, to do some calling. And, you know, to be honest, if I had a choice, I'd call every day of the week, uh, day and night, because I, I just love it. Yeah, but as hosting, uh, Rob, it's a very rewarding job being able to help people tell their stories. 100% Mick and, you know, the, the Mick Bellmans, there's, there's, there's hundreds and hundreds of those people in our industry who, you know, dream to be involved, you know, with, with a good horse or, you know, their dream is just give me one good horse that I can enjoy to ride. And, uh, you know, as you said, I, I've sort of always pretty much focused on those more hobby type trainers or the small stables to, to try to bring their story as, as you do Mick and because you just get so much pleasure hearing their involvement and their passion and it's their passion that makes you passionate for doing the work that we do so yeah it's yeah as I said we're really blessed in our game to have so many wonderful people. You've seen the transformation of racetracks going back to the days of Mooney Valley, Milton uh, in particular, and of course the showgrounds. How does this beast here at Clubman Angle shape up? It, it was, look, you know, when it first came, you know, it obviously got established, I, I was no fan of the place, I'll, I'll be honest with you. And look, you know, I've been really lucky, you know, over the, you know, a number of years now, you know, we, we, we sort of brought up Bella's Delight at the time and brought Nicky Nono up. It had no success here. Like, you know, most of our road trips didn't turn out to be great for us. And, you know, I brought Monomia up here and, you know, she, you know, nearly pulled off a ladyship uh, mile there a few years ago, you know, she was still in front with about 100 to go and got swamped and, you know, sent Rockabella Stars up to Robbie Morris for a little while and I, I've sort of, I actually love the place now, it, it's, a, it's a place that I actually, you know, look forward to coming to and, you know, the, the, the work that everyone's done, you know, at the club here to, to keep building this, this, this stadium, uh, you know, it's first class and it, you, 
the, the thing with, with harness racing, we, we need to be proud of, of what we present to, to people, whether it's owners, breeders, spectators watching in. And I think, you know, everyone at Club Menangle can feel really proud of the work they've done because, you know, I come here and I feel good when I walk in the door. You know, you walk through the front entry and go, well, really professional. You know, everything around the place, stables, is just first class. And, you know, it's a, a real credit to them and, and the work. Look, and yet I still miss... Harold Park, you know, had some, you know, we took a horse there, swing blade, you know, Paul and I when, you know, early days and he won a, um, a tatlow there once, uh, you know, pretty big odds and, you know, we, we loved going to Harold Park, you know, a big bag and nearly won a carousel for me, you know, at, at Bankstown many years ago as well. So we've had some really good stories on our road trips. Some, most of them have been heartbreaking, uh, but, you know, we, we, any, any, any win is a, is a special win. So we, we're treating tonight as a special win. Well, it certainly was a very special win, Rob. Good to catch up with you, no doubt, over the coming weeks as we go through the Miracle Mile Carnival. We'll be seeing a lot more of you and a lot more of Sergeant Lou. Yeah, thanks very much, Mick, and uh, yeah, look forward to it. And, you know, with horses, it's a, it's a minute by minute. You just hope they stay sound, stay healthy, and you need a lot of luck.